Now 6,000 languages are spoken worldwide, each of them diverse and very rich in culture. And we're delighted to be joined this morning by Sharon Handley and Nabia Soria from Roots Into Languages. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Now, like we say, there are 6,000 languages, that's incredible, and yet mm. so many of us don't even know anything more than our own language. So tell us a little bit more, Sharon, about the projects you're trying to promote at the moment. Right, I'm the director of the Northwest Consortium of the Roots Into Language programme, which is a, a national project to try and um, encourage a lot more people to, to study languages. People like yourself who haven't studied languages earlier. So what we're trying to do is encourage children in schools to take uh, a language, because a lot of children decide to drop languages at uh, age 16, which is a great shame. Yeah, because we hear so much about how languages are the key, you know, the key way forward. And particularly I yeah. found, you know, like you mentioned yourself, when I was at school, I wasn't really into languages. It didn't appeal to me, so I, I did drop it myself. Yeah. Now I regret that terribly, because particularly as you're trying to get in the work and role of employment, you realise how important it is to have That's that right. skill. And not only that, if you're going away on holiday, it's just so lovely to be able to immerse yourself in the culture rather than having to stick to places that are more familiar. So it really, really is vital. And do you think that's something that a lot of young people don't appreciate? Well, I think it is, but that's what the project's trying to, trying to change. Mm. Because what we're doing is running lots of what we think are really exciting exciting events um, uh, for schools across the whole of the Northwest region. It's a partnership between Manchester Metropolitan University, Manchester, Salford, Bolton and Central Lancashire. So it's a big project mm. uh, working with all of the schools and we run uh, large language events where, where the kids all come in and they do taste the language sessions uh, using um, sort of innovative uh, techniques. In fact, Nabila is one of our tutors. She does the Urdu sessions okay. and we also yeah. encourage them to to get to know something about the culture, so mm. sort of uh, a little bit of traditional Arabic dancing or Urdu calligraphy, um, Italian mask making, to try and make the whole thing much more exciting and hopefully motivate them to continue with languages at school. Do you think that's the way forward then really to concentrate on the culture? Because I remember sitting in a lesson letters on the board you yeah, know and you're yeah. made to recite it and it just goes in one ear and out the other whereas you're really making it fun aren't you you're really trying to get the children yes. excited that's that's the whole idea behind a lot of the events that we're running we want to make it fun and in fact the feedback we've had from all of the schools is that the, the kids are really responding a mm. lot of them are going back to schools and saying yes i really would like to take a language but the other aspect of what we're doing is um, is we're promoting actually the lesser taught languages such as italian arabic chinese and urdu um, because that appeals to, uh, particularly in a region such as the Northwest, which is culturally div diverse, that, that is immediately attractive to a, a lot of children. And are you finding that the children are responding well, then you're getting a positive response they from this? They certainly are, yes. They're re responding very positively. Um, sort of, we do questionnaires before they start the day, and very often they say, well, not so interested in languages, might continue with languages. And when we do the, the post-event feedback questionnaires, you know, it really we've pushed it all into the very positive, we really would like to continue with languages. Fantastic. So you're seeing almost an immediate swap over in we their are. mentality, yes, aren't you? Yes. And we've taken that one step further now with a project with the Corner House Cinema. So we're now going to be working with the Corner House Cinema to screen films in mm -hmm. Chinese, Arabic, Urdu uh, and Italian. Now that's never been done before with workshops, uh, language workshops linked to the films. So again, the, the, the children respond really well to the films. It makes it fun, yeah. but it also um, gives them a, a live introduction to the culture through the films. And then they do some language workshops, language sessions linked to the films. Fantastic. And film yeah. is, is a lovely introduction because you yes. can sit back and sort of absorb it in your own pace, can't you? And That's it's not right. throwing you in too much at the deep end. So that's brilliant. Now, Nabi, you're going to teach me some phrases, aren't you? Some Urdu phrases today. Yes, that's right. I do warn you, I was appalling at languages <laughs> at school. So I've got to, if you can teach me, you can teach anybody. Okay, put it that way. Very easy. Okay. Very easy. And it's um, what I would like to add also is to, to what Sharon was saying earlier. When we're doing these sessions, what I personally do is, is link Urdu with English and other European languages because it's amazing how similar they are. The, the, term, the terminology is very similar. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's, that's quite interesting. So, for instance, narangi is uh, the word for orange in Urdu and for Spanish. Right. And so, when because we have Spanish, French, German te teachers sitting in the class mm. while we're teaching, um, you know, I, I, I'm that sort of learning as I go along as well. And they'll say, well, wow, that word is the same as the Spanish yeah. terminology. So, that, so, that's quite positive because the kids are. Are very interested. They suddenly become very interested that their language, Urdu, is not very far removed from 
that's and the thing is it's just speak. making it more accessible that's because right. a lot of yeah. people you know especially Urdu because mm -hmm. it's not something like Spanish or French that you know they might have heard on, on sort of more frequent holidays right, yeah. they suddenly clam up and you think oh, I can't possibly that's do right, it yeah. so it's yeah. just breaking down that yeah, barrier it's more isn't psychological it? and yeah. you know and I think it's breaking down those barriers initially and yeah. I think once you've done it it's so impressive to be able to say I can speak Definitely. Urdu or something Definitely. like that isn't it? it's yeah. a lot more exciting than saying I've got a French TCSE yeah. yeah. <laughs> so there's a different sound system but that's not an issue that's not a barrier you know I mean as long as you can communicate you can get your message across obviously you know it's not fantastic okay. so are we going to go through a few phrases now and obviously people at home if you're watching and you'd like to learn some Urdu and impress maybe the kids when they come in from school if you're sitting at home then obviously get involved with us now so okay um hello uh, first of all hello is assalamu alaikum assalamu assalamu alaikum alaikum and the reply is wa alaikum wa alaikum assalam assalam and then um, the next one we could do is um, what is your name okay. aapka aapka naam naam kya hai kya hai and the reply is my name is N uh, nabila for instance i would say my name yeah. is nabila mera naam mera naam nabila hai so as so, i so, say so amy amy yeah. amy hai hai yeah so why do we say hey? Because the sentence structure is quite different yeah, as well, is the, that correct? That's right. Um, the grammar, the word order is very different. So it, it's the words switch around. So in Urdu it would be, uh, my name Nabila is, mera naam Nabila hai. And what I do is when I'm teaching this, I'll, uh, it'll be up on the whiteboard and I'll ask the kids to say, can you recognise a word in there that's very similar to English? Mm. And they'll say naam name yeah so we recognize that once they've made that link they want they're eager to know more mm. so these words do come up because the languages are linked it's an indo-european language do the mm. children struggle with the change in the sentence structure because it isn't quite as mirrored as sort of english is it no, so uh, i don't find that a problem because they the, the children who come to our taster events are already studying either spanish french or german mm -hmm. and uh, some of those languages have similar word order to mm -hmm. urdu and uh, it's amazing that these kids, kids at this age, their minds are, are like sponges and they can absorb quite a lot. I mean, they have the ability to learn a lot more in terms of languages than we do, for instance, yeah. later on in life. So I don't, I, find that, I don't find that a challenge. I actually find it quite interesting. Well, Miss, why is that like that, you know? And, um, they're inquisitive, they want to know yeah, answers, they don't do. they? And that's half the battle, Yeah, really. and plus you write, in Urdu it's, and Arabic, which, which is the other language that we're doing, it, you write from right to left. Mm. And when they're writing the script, they, they find it's so rewarding when they can write their name, for instance, yeah. you know, mm. I'll get them to practice their name. So that's, and then they take that home with them and it's quite rewarding for them. Fantastic, so what age group are we talking then? From 14 to, to 19. 14 to 19. Yes. Now that's an age group that I've got a lot of friends who are teachers and they say they can yes. be a, a complete nightmare. That younger generation yeah. have quite a bad reputation really. People think they just don't want to learn and they can perhaps be quite rude and so forth. Are you finding that or are you finding that actually you're being pleasantly surprised? We're not finding that at all, are we? No. I think because they're captivated by mm. everything. There's so, so many new things. We, we've taken a lot of trouble to make sure that the teaching mm. is really of a very good standard yeah. so that you know, it's interactive and mm -hmm. they're interested by it. But also all the, the cultural uh, sort yeah. of dressing up uh, in Asian clothes or the calligraphy, they love yeah. that because they're going to take it home and, and put it on their wall. So it's really creative. It's creative yeah. and we're finding yeah. that that just keeps their attention and, and we didn't have any problems at all. No, we? well what the, the, the way we've designed the, for, the format, um, the events, um, uh, the taster events are usually quite short the actual teaching is very intensive and short but what they do then is go to multicultural markets and I'll be sitting there with the henna and even the lads come up to me and I'll say oh miss can you put some on me you know and they, they, they really get into it there's music there's clothes that they can try on and they love it they have so much yeah. fun don't they so um, if for the for the people at home who might be interested in getting involved yes. what's the next step how can they really appreciate and, and get into this culture well, we'd love it if they did get involved because mm -hmm. we, we really want to, to, to spread the word. If they look on our website, mm -hmm. uh, Roots into Languages, Northwest, on the, on the website is a list of all our activities and also how to contact us. They can contact us through the website. So and Roots into Languages Northwest. Fantastic. And how, where are the events being held? As you say, it's right across the, the, the yes. Manchester area, isn't it? Yes. Um, each of the universities is hosting events. 
So, mm -hmm. so it in includes uh, Preston with Central Lancashire. Mm -hmm. um, but we also do events out in schools as well. Mm -hmm. And if any schools are interested in having, for, for example, a taster session in Urdu or five week uh, lunchtime club mm -hmm. just to, to uh, enthuse the, the kids at school, we will do that.